Welcome to this tutorial on SQL joins. Now if you're in a small office, typically you use something like Microsoft Excel to track information. So in our example here, we've got a very small little sheet with people's names and phone numbers. Now this works well for a small office with a limited number of information. However, once you get big, it starts to become problematic. So in our example here, we start adding more columns. So you see that we have now a couple additional things, one of which is company. So both Dan and Sarah go to the same company, ABC. We also have some information that's not really linked to the person, but it's linked to the company. So the office phone obviously is linked to the person field because Don and Sarah have different office phones. Same thing with home phones. However, the fax and main number are really linked to the company, not the person. Now whenever you have something like this happen, you start having problems in the data. So assume, for example, that Don ends up calling in saying, hey, ABC has changed their fax number. So your intern goes in, pulls up his record in Excel, and changes the fax number to something else. However, maybe Sarah then is forgotten because your intern only updated Don. In addition, with very large data sets, this kind of thing ends up being very inefficient as you're storing the same data multiple times. So the solution then is going to be to pull out the fax, main, and company field so we don't have this kind of redundancy. So here's our revised system. Now you can see that we still have our first table, our person table with Don, Sarah, Bob, and the information that is about Don or is about Sarah. Especially important is we still have this company field here. This is now something we call a foreign key. It refers to information about Don, saying Don works at ABC, but also it gives us sort of a pointer or a bookmark that we can use to go to a different table, our new table over here. Now notice in our new table we have the information in the column name, and these values match what we have over here. So in this table, this is something called the primary key, or PK for short. Over here in company, it's called a foreign key, or FK for short. Now this gives us a way to join back the data that we've just split. So if you see now in our company table, we have name, fax, and name. There's only one record for ABC. So now when it comes time for someone to update information, when ABC says, hey, my fax number's changed, there's only one place now for you to put in the new fax number. So that's good. But now what we need to do is get back our original layout where we can see what Don's fax number and Sarah's main number is. To do this you write a SQL statement. So you see over here we have select star from people in our joint company and some on conditions here. So just as a reminder select star says pull back all the rows from tells us where we're going to get these rows from. So first we're going to get it from people, which is our first table up here. Then we want to do an inner join on company. So take this people and join it with the company. However, there's a problem that the computers are very, very literal minded and they don't really know how we want those to join. So we use this on clause over here to say where people should be joined on company. So you see then we have people and we tell it this little dot here, dot company tells us the field. So people table, company field, should equal the company table and the name field. In other words, all it's doing, really doing, is saying take this and match it with this. So now let's actually show you what the computer does as it puts this together. It takes these two tables, people and company, and does comparisons. So first, it's going to say, take John, Jamie, and we have the value ABC, which again is what we could put right here if we just sort of imagine it, the computer testing this in memory. And for every single row in the company table, it's going to mat try and match that. So first, it matches it over here with ZYX. So does ABC equal ZYX? You know, our condition right here, ABC equal Z y x well, obviously the answer is no it does not so it just continues it doesn't do anything with that row then it goes down here and checks with the second one 
is ABC equal to ABC. So we just scratch this out and we write ABC. Is it ABC equal to ABC? Yes, of course it is. So we're going to take these two rows, smash them together, and put them into our result set. Now this purple table here isn't actually stored anywhere. It's just sort of held in memory for you as it tries to, the computer tries to answer this query. So now that we've done the first row, we've done Don, now we're going to go to Sarah. So again, the computer says, okay, is ABC equal to ZYX? The answer is no, it's not. So it does nothing. It keeps going. Is ABC equal to ABC? Yes, it is. So it goes ahead and takes this and this and it's going to add it down here into our results. Lastly, we're going to go to Bob, and we're going to ask Bob, is this equal to ABC? Well, no, it's not, so ignore it. Is this equal to ZYX? Yes, it is. So we're going to take those two rows, we're going to join them together, and add them to our results. And now we have the answer to this. Now this is a very simple example where every single person in our set has exactly one company that they match with. However, in real life it gets more complicated than that, and this is really where relational database systems, which is the model we're looking at here, come into their own. So I tweaked the data a little bit. Now ABC has got two fax numbers, which again is not uncommon for a large organization. We've also changed Sarah from ABC to CBS, who does not have a fax. So again, we have the same SQL condition over here, where people company equals company name. So we're going to compare this column with this column. So we start with this. Is ABC equal to ABC? Yep, we already know that. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add the result of this and this to our table. But we're not done yet. We're going to keep on com comparing. So now, is this ABC equal to this ABC. Well, yes, it is. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this and this and add that to our results. So now we see that we've got something kind of interesting. Even though Don Jamie is only one row over here, he's showing up twice in our result sets, one with each fax number. So now we go to Sarah Smith from CBS. The computer compares her. Is CBS equal to ABC? No, it's not, so keep going. Is it equal to ABC? No. Nope. Is it equal to ZYX? No. Nope. And so Sarah Smith is not included at all in our results set because she doesn't match any of these fax numbers. Now this is because we did what's called the inner join, saying that everything has to have a match. You can also do something called an outer join, where you say that in you should include Sarah even though she doesn't have a fax number. That's something that you can look up on your own later. So now we go to our last person. We have Bob over here. And so it says, is Bob equal to ABC? Nope. Is he equal to ABC? Nope. Is he equal to ZYX? Well, yes. So go ahead and add him to our results set as well. So then, now that we've created our results set in memory, this is what you're actually going to see in whatever program it is they use to run this SQL command. And again, this is not something that actually exists as it is on a disk. All of our data is on these tables here, where we have some nice advantages of being able to store multiple values for ABC's fax number. And we can also have missing data that's efficiently stored. We don't have a row for Sarah Smith at CPS because they don't have an AD fax number. So this should give you a good idea of how a computer is actually going to handle these joined records.